My theology has been absolutely rocked over the last 72 hours, and the Holy Spirit is showing me things in the Word of God that has changed the way I view the Lord. I've been so wrong about the role of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers and in my own life, and I'm going to share that with you today. What I'm about to share might be difficult to receive for some of you, but I ask that you please listen to the end of the video to what I have to say and be persuaded by the Word of God and what Scripture says. And if you disagree, that's okay. Go to the Word, search for yourself, and then let's have a conversation about it. This certainly won't be the last video I make on this topic, and it begins to encroach on the once saved, always saved subject, which we are going to talk about in future videos. But for now, I want to talk about the role of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers and how I was so wrong about this. What if I were to tell you that after you come to Christ and you are a Christian, the role of the Holy Spirit changes from convicting you of your sin to convincing you of your righteousness in Christ? Or in other words, as a believer, the Holy Spirit does not convict us of our sins. Now, this all started by me trying to find a scripture that says the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts believers of sins. And guess what? It's not there. In fact, everything will lead you back to John chapter 16, starting with verse 8 through 11. He says, And when He comes, the Holy Spirit, He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment, concerning sin because they do not believe in Me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will no longer see Me, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Now let's read this again. When he comes, talking about the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world concerning sin. Concerning sin because they, the world, do not believe in me. So what is he convicting them of? We've always heard we have to realize we're sinners in need of a Savior before we can come to Christ. Well, who do you think does that? That is the work of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit convicting of sin happens in the heart of the unbeliever, not the Christian. Let's move on. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Who is you? That's you and I. That's Christians. So for Christians, the work of the Holy Spirit is to convict concerning righteousness. What does this mean? Well, this word convict holds several meanings in the Greek, and that means to expose, refute, or convince. I'll put it to you this way. Before we are in Christ, the Holy Spirit acts as a prosecutor, but after we come to Christ, the Holy Spirit becomes our defender. He is convincing us of our righteousness in Jesus Christ, because that word, he's acting as an advocate, right? So either he's prosecuting us because of our sin because of our unbelief in Jesus and what he did on the cross, or he's defending us to the Father, saying, hey, he is righteousness because he believes in Christ. Because when we look at the Greek word for helper, it says one who pleads another's cause before a judge, a pleader, counsel for defense, legal assistant, an advocate. This is who the Holy Spirit is to us. So as a believer, he's not saying, hey, this is a sinner right here. Rather, he's saying this one is right righteous because he believes in Jesus Christ. We have to look at some other scriptures to understand this. We know that as Christians, we are under the new covenant. Look at Hebrews 8. It says, for if the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion to look for a second. So we are under the new covenant, New Testament. For he finds fault with them when he says, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, so I showed no concern for them, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. This is the new covenant right here that we're under. I will put my laws into their minds. I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. And skipping down to 12, he says, for I will be merciful merciful towards their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. In speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete, and what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. So now we're under this new covenant. Look at Hebrews starting in verse 15. He says, and the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. What is he saying? This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on 
their hearts. I'll write them on their minds. And then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. So the Lord says, I have forgiven their sins. If you are in Christ, that's what the perfect sacrifice of Jesus was for. We're believing in that for our righteousness. So what is the job of the Holy Spirit now is to convince you that what Jesus did on the cross is enough. That's what he's doing. He's showing us our righteousness is in Christ. He's reminding us of the law written on our hearts. It sounds like semantics, but it's not. Instead of saying, hey, you were speeding going 15 miles an hour over the speed limit. He says, hey, I want to remind you the speed limit is 45. Do you see the difference in what the Holy Spirit does? This is the only way Paul could write this. There is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. In Romans chapter 5, he talks about how the law brings judgment and condemnation. So when we feel that guilt and shame and that condemnation and that we're falling short constantly, it's because we're trying to keep the law in our own works. If you're feeling condemnation, condemnation, feeling all of those things, that is not the work of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Satan is the one who is the accuser of the brother. Revelation chapter 12 says that he accuses us day and night, but the Holy Spirit is your defender. He's convincing God of your righteousness because of what Jesus did on the cross. Do you see how this works? He's not telling you all the things you did wrong. He's not pointing out, pointing every little thing you did wrong. That's what the law does, but we're no longer under the law. We're under grace. And then we do good works because we are saved, not to be saved. Again, we'll get into that in a future video. So instead of telling you and showing you everything that's wrong with you, the Holy Spirit shows you what is perfect, which is the law of God. He holds up that perfect standard. And when you're in the presence of perfection of Jesus, then we see areas we need to improve in and we move towards the righteousness and holiness of Christ. That's called sanctification. Rather than telling you everything you're not, the Holy Spirit tells you and reminds you who you are in Christ. Is this not amazing news? Rather than pointing to sin, he points to Jesus, which illuminates the nature of of all things in our hearts. Y'all, when I first heard this, I was offended. I was upset. I said, God, this can't be. And I'm frantically searching scripture saying there's got to be something that says the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin. And I just heard the Spirit of the Lord so clearly said, this is my grace. This is my love. It sounds too good to be true, but that is the definition of grace. He's giving us something we do not deserve. And then I begin to remember scriptures like who the sun sets free is free indeed. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And all of these things begin to flood my mind. And I begin to see that the Lord was trying to show us that when we are in Christ, there is freedom and there is liberty. If I'm being real honest, y'all, I didn't feel very free before. I felt like I was constantly going to disappoint the Lord. I felt like I was constantly going to mess up. I felt like I was constantly about to step over some line. I was more fearful and paranoid and saw God as more of a dictator rather than a loving father that sent his son to display the most loving act mankind will ever known. I saw him as this dictator that was always upset with me and I couldn't possibly keep his law right, but he was just basically tolerating me and the love and grace of God just began to flow and wash over me and I just began to weep because I saw that the Holy Spirit all of this time was never trying to tell me how bad I was to persuade me unto righteousness and holiness but rather he was trying to convince me that it is because of Jesus that I am righteous. Do we see the difference? There is a huge difference. You will read the whole word of God through a different lens. Thy rod, thy staff, thy comfort me. As sheep, when we start to stray from the flock, he guides us right back in. That's the gentleness of the Holy Spirit. Remember what my law says. Remember my law says this. It's written on our minds and on our hearts. In that same passage of John 16, Jesus says, the spirit of truth will lead you into all truth. The Holy 
Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. He shows us what the law says that's written on our heart. And he says, remember who you are in Christ. Remember who you are. I was operating out of a legalistic mindset that because I was keeping the law of God like the older brother of the prodigal son, you know, that he was upset with the grace and mercy of God that people could do so many things and still inherit the kingdom of heaven. I was jealous. I didn't understand the grace of God. That's what religion and legalism does to people. And I believe the Lord wants to set some people free of that today and understand the grace that is available to us when we say yes to Christ. There is grace there. We're no longer under the law. It's the only way Jesus could say that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But so many of us, and I am guilty of this, want to add the but. We got to do this. But you need to do that. But you have to. That's not what the scripture says. Do works matter? Yes, but not to be saved. But because we are saved, the judgment seat of Christ versus the great white throne. We're going to do a video on it. It makes all the difference in the world. You will read the Bible in a whole new way and understand the Lord and the Holy Spirit and what Jesus did on the cross and what Jesus said in a whole new light. You'll understand the writings of Paul, the law versus grace in a whole new light. You'll see your brother and sister in a whole new light at the love of God and the grace of God will overwhelm you. And now the lens that you see through is not that of judgment and condemnation, but it's that of grace and love for your brother and sister. And it's only abiding in this place in Christ that we can love one another. But it starts with how we view God. It starts with how we view the Holy Spirit. And if we view the Holy Spirit as one that's constantly beating us over the head every time we mess up and sin, but oh, instead he just whispers it now instead of saying you're a sinner he's just like oh i wouldn't have done that no that's not the holy spirit he says remember who you are in christ remember who you are you are righteous because of what jesus did here is the law that's written on your heart the law says this and then we come back into agreement with the law of god that is why the bible says bear fruit in keeping with repentance we're constantly repenting saying you know what god i thought my way was better but actually your law because the holy spirit is convincing me of my righteousness in you your law is correct and your law is right so I'm going to come away from my way, change my mind about my way, and come back to your way. That is what keeping with repentance means. And when we do that, we're going to bear fruit in our lives. Our works are going to change. Our actions are going to change. Everything changes when we look at the cross, when we're constantly reminded of what Jesus did on the cross. Everything comes back to Jesus, and it has nothing to do with our goodness. None is righteous, no, not one. Oh my Lord, y'all, the revelation this has brought to me has brought so much freedom and joy in my house. I've shared this with several trusted leaders and counsel that I know, and we've been pouring over the scriptures and rejoicing in what God is saying through this passage and the role that the Holy Spirit takes, and our eyes have been open to the goodness and the love and the grace of God, and that is the lens He wants His people to see through. I I hope and I pray that you will take it to the Word. I pray that you will take it to prayer and ask the Holy Spirit, teach me your ways. Teach me what you're like. Teach me who you are. Illuminate Scripture in my heart and in my life. And my friend, I promise you, He will be faithful to do it. I know this is a lot to chew on. My mind has been going crazy over the last 72 hours, so we're going to be making more videos to break all of this down and how it applies to us today as believers and how we can walk this out and become disciples of Jesus Christ. I seriously hope this blessed you today and that you'll pray on this, that you'll read on this. Don't take my word for it. Go back to the word of God. But if you're not subscribed, I would certainly appreciate it and ask that you hit that like button. That's the thumbs up button. And that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people. And ladies and gentlemen, I know a lot of people that need to hear this. So would you share this video with a friend or a family member that you think could be ministered to by this message? Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.